Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. Now we all know the first time Indiana and Illinois faced off, Coach Calvin Sampson caught just a little bit of slack from the Orange Crush about the Eric Gordon saga. But Indiana's fans fought back this past weekend by supporting the guy who was turned around the Hoosier program. Now many fans participated in the inaugural Sampson out wearing the coach's blue dress shirt and red tie combo he is so known for. Now the fans didn't take it easy on Illini coach Bruce Weber either as chants of Eric Gordon and shut up Weber were common throughout the day. But now we're going to welcome in Mark Kaplan to do his new segment, The Rundown, where he's going to take us through the world of college basketball. Mark, take it away. Let's get right to it. The biggest game of the week featured two of the top teams in the ACC, number 5 North Carolina versus 16th ranked Duke. Duke was up most of the game, but UNC came back in the second half and beat Duke in those Cameron Crazies 79-73. to The best game of the week came on Saturday and was a clash of two Big 12 teams it was Bob Knight's Texas, Texas Tech team against the 12th ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. It took two overtimes, but Oklahoma State prevailed by two, behind 35 points and 14 rebounds from Mario Bogan. The upset special was a non-conference game between unranked West Virginia against, against the number two team in the land and leaders of the Pac-10 UCLA Bruins. West Virginia held them off and beat UCLA 70-65. Elsewhere in the Pac-10, the unranked Arizona Wildcats, who, believe it or not, have the number one RPI in the nation. They beat up on the number 15 ranked Oregon Ducks, 77 to 74. The SEC had its top two teams face off as number one ranked Florida went to battle against the number 18 ranked Kentucky Wildcats at Rupp Arena. It was an unbelievable game that came down to the wire but Florida hung on and beat Kentucky to remain unbeaten in conference play. In other SEC action, number 19 Alabama falls to a good Ole Miss team, 75-69. Alabama, who at one point in the season was ranked as high as sixth, keeps on slipping and sliding and out of the top 25. Number 12 Marquette and number 23 Georgetown found themselves 2-3 and three in the Big East standings before they clashed on Saturday. Georgetown, however, left nothing to doubt as they beat Marquette 76 to 58. From the Horizon League, Wright State handed number nine ranked Butler its third loss of the season and second in the division play, thanks in large part because of Deshaun Woods' 30-point effort. The player of the week goes to my boy from Memphis, Jeremy Hunt, who scored a career high 25 points in the first half and ended up with 30 points as number 10 ranked Memphis, as the number 10 ranked Memphis Tigers handed it to former IE coach Mike Davis and his Blazers 70 to 56. The Tigers remain perfect in Conference USA. I'm Mark Kaplan and that was the rundown. Thanks Mark. No love lost from Mike Davis on my part either. Pitchers and catchers may just be reporting for spring training in Major League Baseball, but just a week from Friday the Hoosier baseball team will begin their 2007 season. For second-year head coach Tracy Smith, the 20 incoming freshmen to this year's team represent his first recruiting class at IU. In addition to the young guns, the Hoosiers returned 14 letter winners from last year's team who finished 22-34 on the season and just 11-21 in the Big Ten. Next Friday's opener is part of the Wiregrass Baseball Classic in Alabama. The Hoosiers will face Troy in the opener and will take on Southern Mississippi and Georgia Southern later in the Classic. Indiana basketball recruit Eli Holman was reinstated to play at Richmond High School in California after being suspended for an altercation that took place with an official last season. Holman recently recovered from being grazed by a bullet in his hometown of Richmond while driving back on January 20th. The 6'9", 210-pound Holman scored 27 points, had 12 rebounds, and 9 blocks in his return on February 1st. Holman will arrive in Bloomington after the school year. It was a major test this weekend for the undefeated 38th ranked IU women's tennis team with a road trip to take on 11th ranked Duke and 7th ranked North Carolina on back-to-back -back days. The Hoosiers would have a chance to make an absolutely ginormous statement. Things looked promising as the Hoosiers won their first doubles match against the Blue Devils, but IU could not keep the pressure on, falling in the next two matches as Duke took the doubles point. As for singles, senior Cecile Purton was the only IU player to win her match as she took the singles points and the match 6-1. to one. Hard to imagine things could get any worse, but they did as the Hoosiers were shut out by the Tar Heels of UNC 7-0. to nil. 
I use. Purden also lost her first singles match of the year in the loss. The Hoosiers will try to get a new win streak started this Saturday in Bloomington. They'll be hosting number 18, Wake Forest. The action begins at 10 in the morning. Now make sure Hoosier Sports Night is your home for complete coverage of the Big Ten Tournament. Now coverage begins with the women's tournament on March 1st and the men's tournament on March 8th. We'll have full coverage and post-game sound coming in from Indy and Chicago for those two weeks. Hoosier Sports Night is your home for postseason basketball. DJ White and Roderick Wilmot, Nikki Smith and Sarah McKay, just a few examples of many Indiana basketball players who consistently find themselves leading several categories in the box score each and every game. What about all the other IU basketball players that don't necessarily don a cream and crimson jersey, but they can still drop 20 plus points and grab 10 boards a night? That's where intramural sports comes in, and as our own Ben Heisler reports, you don't necessarily have to be a superstar athlete to play for an Indiana basketball team. Basketball fever is in full effect here at Indiana University, but not just at Assembly Hall. Here at the Hyper Intramural Center, basketball season is in full swing. For junior Lambda Chi fraternity member and player Teddy Johnson, playing intramural basketball with the frat is about more than just the love of the game. We're all laid back guys. Each person brings something different to the court. My buddy Big Rob, he brings the height. I bring the speed, the confidence, and the power. That's what I do. Johnson also says that intramurals is a great way to break from all the college stress. It's something to do outside of studying, you know, you don't want to be stuck in the room all day, so come out, play some hoops, score on some kids, usually win games, but we lost this one, though. It only makes sense that intramural basketball has been taking place at IU since the early 1950s, but even with that, everyone involved has a little word to say. Fantastic. Exciting. Fantastic. Fun. Reporting from the Hyper, Ben Heisler, who's your sports night. Here's a look at the rankings for intramural basketball. The family and UMAD sit atop the men's rankings, while club soccer ladies and Alpha Z Delta lead the women's division. And in co-intramurals, Christian Student Fellowship and Lost Ones are your leaders. Now before we wrap up this week's episode, let's preview the IU sports action coming up this week. On Wednesday, the men's basketball team will be in West Lafayette looking to take the, the season series from Purdue. Then Thursday, the men's tennis team will be competing in Bloomington in two different matches. In the morning, they take on DePaul, and in the evening, they'll be facing Eastern Kentucky. Also Thursday, the Big Ten Championships for men's swimming begin in Columbus at Ohio State. On Friday, the women's softball season officially kicks off. The team will be in Houston competing in a doubleheader against Southern Illinois and Centenary College. Here in Bloomington, the men's and women's track and field teams will be hosting the Hoosier Hills Invitational, while the men's wrestling team will be going against Michigan State, and the men's swim team competes in day two of the Big Ten Championships. On Saturday, the men's basketball team will be in Ann Arbor battling Michigan. The softball team remains in Houston, where they'll be playing LSU, and the women's swim team will host the IU Last Chance Invitational. And rounding it out, the women's tennis team will host Wake Forest. Wrapping up the weekend, on Sunday, the women's basketball team will be at Assembly Hall as they host Illinois. The women's tennis team will also be competing at home. They'll be taking on Kentucky. The men's wrestling team will continue their tough Big Ten schedule as they look for a win at Wisconsin. And the men's golf team will tee off their spring opener in Guadalajara, Mexico, as they compete in the Club de Gold Santa Anita Classic. Well, Andy, I never really had a chance to give you a hard time about the Bears. Yes, but you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, it could have been. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. No, I don't but, see how that possibly could have gone any worse for me. You had but, Ronan. You had Ronan. You know, my one bear supporter on the show wearing a freaking. Yeah, but you don't. Shirt. You don't want to be involved with Ronan anyway. So, <laughs> so we'll just li we'll leave it alone from there, and we'll just stick with IU sports. Well, be sure that you catch all of the IU coverage. Uh, we're gonna have post game reports from the Purdue game. Also, be sure to check out iustv.com for ongoing coverage. For Chris Hopper, I'm Annie Tolsky, and for Hoosier Sports Night, we'll see you next time.